<تصفيق> تعالى النهاردة كده بقى مصر uh, uh, We'll start a new chapter The most important and the most longest هو أطول حد في ال chapters وأكثرهم أهمية لأنه dependable عليه two chapters بعد كده Electromagnetic induction أو electromagnetic uh, fields و uh, alternative currents الشابتر بيكلمني عن حاجة اسمها magnetic fields where if we talked about the magnetic fields so <coughs> it is the field number three we talked before about the gravitational field and electrical field and now it is the magnetic field <coughs> the magnetic field أنا عايز أدرسه لثلاث حاجة either a magnet سواء كان بقى permanent magnet أو temporary magnet أو حد عامل نفسه magnet by mean a wire carrying current اللي احنا كنا بنسميه في الأو level electromagnet Electro <تصفيق> بس قبل ما نبدا وناخد الماجنتيك فيلد ونعرف ايه هو بالنسبه للبرمننت والتمبرري ماجنت او بالنسبه للالكترو ماجنت هاو وي كان جين ا ماجنتيك بروبرتي هاو وي جين magnetic property ده سؤال مهم جدا I think you know sir uh, in chemistry <coughs> if you remember we said that for any element which has electrons in the 4D shell it has a magnetic property which are called the transition elements صح كده؟ Yes. Great. The chapter is left and you study the chapter. And chemistry. Yeah. As iron, copper, cobalt, whatever. So all the transition elements which has 4D shell electrons giving a property for the element or for the matter to be magnetized. And according to <clears throat> these materials, we can make either permanent magnet or temporary magnet. And I think before in all level, we discuss the difference between the permanent magnet and temporary magnet. That the permanent magnet is the magnet which made up of an easy or hard magnetized material. Hard. Right. So it is hard to be magnetized and hard to remove its magnetization. So it takes a long time. And the magnet, so we called it permanent magnet and we made it of Soft iron or hard iron? Hard iron. Right. <laughs> While the temporary one is made up of? Soft iron. Right. Easy magnetized. So it is easy to be magnetized and easy to remove the magnetization. And we made it of soft iron. Great. While <clears throat> if we have a wire and a compass, <clears throat> and accidentally we're passing a current through the wire, 
they noted that the compost needle deflected by mean as a result for the current moving inside the wire it produces a magnetic field or it gives a magnetic property for the wire which made the compass to deflect and we call this one electromagnet by mean by using the electric current or electricity we can generate magnetism electromagnet so either the permanent or temporary or even the electromagnet all of them will have a property of being magnetized so what the meaning of the magnetization or magnetic field around each one of them with our haga and eyes the meaning of magnetic field <clears throat> as any field we said that the field is the space or area around a property at which this property appears so if we said magnetic field so it will be region of a space at which the magnetic property appears. So if we have a magnet, which has two poles, north and south. So they noted that around this magnet, we have an area or region at which if we close a pin or an iron or any iron fillings, they will attract it. Why? Because of that field around this magnet. But closer to the magnet itself, they found that there is an imaginary lines which are getting out from the magnet and determine the shape of the magnetic field around it. And we say that for the power magnet, we have two directions of the field lines. The first direction outside the magnet and the other one inside the magnet. So outside the magnet, the field lines directed from the north to south. While inside the magnet, it directed from the south to the north. So again, around each magnet, even a magnet or electromagnet, there is a field by mean the region at which the magnetic property appears or the magnetic strength appears. This magnetic property will appear in the form of magnetic field lines. This magnetic field lines has two directions. First of all, outside the magnet from the north pole towards the south pole. Secondly, inside the magnet from the south to the north. Great. <clears throat> Note that. These field lines can determine three things. First of all, <clears throat> it's a direction can determine the poles. So by using these directions, you can see 
This is the north and this is south. Why? Because it is directed outside to where did this one. So this is north and this is south. So the direction of the field lines can determine the pools or identify the pools. Yes, okay. Second of all, the density of them by in how much they are dense. If they are crowded, it means that the strength of the field is great and the magnetic field have a high magnetization of strength. So the density can determine the strength. I mean that if they are close to each other or away from each other, if they are close to each other, so it will be more dense and the strength increases. So the strength of the magnetic field depends on the spaces between each magnetic field line and the other. So <clears throat> direction of the magnetic field lines indicate the pools, density or by other means, the distance between each line and the other, determine the strengths and they can't enter. So this is for the magnetic field. So again, the magnetic field is the region around the magnet or electromagnetic at which the property of magnetization increases or appears in the form of magnetic field lines, which are getting out from the north to the south outside the magnet, inside from south to north, and these lines can be intersected. The direction indicates the bull and the spaces between them indicates the strengths. <clears throat> All right. Right. After that, we had some properties about the magnets that like pools and opposite pools. We know that the like pools are repelled while the opposite are attracted. And here, because of the repulsion and the attraction, we can conclude two things, that there is a force can originate and do we need to know this force? Secondly, there is a neutral point. And do we need to indicate what is the neutral point? <clears throat> First of all, what the force and the neutral point? If we have two similar pools, I mean north, north, south, south, so each one <laughs> represents a magnet. Each one has its own magnetic field. So there is a magnetic field for the first one. And there is a magnetic field for the second one. But I mean, we have two magnetic fields interact with each other. This interaction may lead to a force of attraction or force of repulsion. So the force for another time, it happens between two fields, two gravitational fields two electrical fields, or even two magnetic fields. So this is the first point. We need to know the force between two magnetic fields. Second of all, <clears throat> at which point between these two pools or outside these two pools, we can say that the magnetic field vanishes. This is called the neutral point. So the neutral point is the point at which there is no magnetic field and it's caused by two magnetic fields too. So if we have two magnetic fields, so we have two properties, force and neutral point. We need to discuss this uh, points.
any any <sighs> doubts about this part? I think this is a general revision about what we take in O level. Yes, sir, but I did not understand the neutral point. Okay, the neutral point. <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> if you have here a north and here a north. So the magnetic field lines were getting out from the north, like that, like that. And here, like that, like that, like that, like that. At this point exactly, at the center between the two poles of the two magnets, you can find that there is a magnetic field here. <coughs> They said no. Oh. Why? Because as a result on the vector of the two magnetic fields, now we are considering them as a vector because each one has its own direction. Uh, they ripple, but I mean they have same <coughs> direction in the opposite one. So the magnetic field one has positive, while the magnetic field one, two has negative. So if they are identical, so they will result to zero. While if we have two opposite, well, I mean, this is north and this is south, so you can find that all the gap between the two will fill by the magnetic field line. So, there is no neutral point here, but the neutral point will be outside the magnet because here we have north and here we have south. So if we close another one from here, north and here, south. So you can find that there is a neutral point. So the neutral point appears in the regions which we have a negative direction. So the neutral point is the point at which there is no magnetic field. And it can appear in electromagnets clearly than the permanent or temporary magnets. Okay. Now, we have uh, another thing, which is called magnetic flux density. Or what we call the P. So P capital or capital P is the magnetic flux density. We know the magnetic density, but what the meaning of flux? So the flux has a simple phi and the flux is the field lines. So we call the field lines as flux. So the magnetic flux density by mean how the field lines are crowded. So if we have a paper <clears throat> or a plane, and we have a magnetic fields. Lines, and we said that they cannot intersect, but I mean they are parallel to each other. <clears throat> they determine the magnetic flux density as the number of flux lines which passes perpendicular to the plane. By me, if this is north and south, 
and this is the plane. You can notice that the field lines are getting out from the north to the south. If you draw a tangent for this one with the plane, you will find that it is always perpendicular. So in order to know the magnetic flux density, it is the number of flux lines which passes through a cross-sectional area <clears throat> of a certain plane. So according to this samples, we can say that P is equal to phi perpendicular to the area. Again, the magnetic flux density is the number of flux lines phi, which passes perpendicular to the field lines, uh, sorry, <coughs> to a plane or an area of a plane. So if you have a plane and you can set up this one, north and south, and this is the plane, can see that it will getting out like that from north to south, it will be also 90 degree. So the field lines which are getting out from the magnet perpendicular to the plane area is that magnetic flux density. And how we are traveling. Okay. What happened if the plane is inclined? in case of inclined plane. So P will equals to phi over area, but we will take which component, the horizontal or the vertical? So I mean that if this is the magnetic field lines. And this is the plane. And the plane make an angle theta. So we'll so. take the vertical component. Yeah, so the vertical component will take sine or cosine? It will take cosine. Yes, in this case, it will take cosine. So if the angle is between the perpendicular to the area and the field lines, it will take cosine. While if it is between the field lines and the area itself, it will take sine. So according to the position of angle theta, but always we will take the vertical component. So either sine, theta or sine theta according to the position. <laughs> In case of sine theta, it means that the theta is between what and what? Between phi and A. While cosine theta between phi and perpendicular to A. So again, the magnetic flux density or how the magnetic flux lines are crowded at a certain area, which is the unit area one meter squared. So it can be dread by phi over A. Phi by mean the magnetic flux lines, which passes perpendicular to a certain area. And in case it is inclined, we will take sine or cosine according to the position of angle theta. B is measured in which unit? Phi and A. Phi can be measured in unit of Weber. So Weber is the measuring unit of the flux lines, phi. Area, of course, in meter square. 
So P can measure in units of whipper per meter squared, which is equivalent to Tesla. So B can be measured in unit of Tesla, which is equivalent to whipper per meter squared, as whipper is the measuring unit of the flux lines, and meter squared is the measuring unit for the area. So if he asked it about, define what the meaning of Tesla or what is meant by Tesla? So it will be? It is? Yes, per uh, meter squared. Yeah, the magnetic flux density when one whipper as flux line passes perpendicularly to one meter square as area. So this is the meaning of Tesla. So one Tesla equivalent to one meter, sorry, one whipper per meter square. Any doubt about this part? Um, yes, hmm? You have a question? Sir, you draw uh, for in case of cosine. Can you please draw one diagram in case of sine? Sure. This is the field lines. And here is the area. So here is the angle theta between the field line and the area itself. So in this case, by the red one, this is the horizontal component. This is the vertical component. This one will take cosine. This one will take sine. While here, this is the vertical component. This is the horizontal component. This one will take cosine and this one will take sine. Is it clear? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. <clears throat> now, what about the electromagnet? They found that. If you have a wire carrying a current so it will turn it to a magnet and take all the properties of a magnet. So if we have a wire carrying a current, so it will be a magnet with the old properties of being a magnet. It has magnetic field lines, it had magnetic flux density, and it acts as a magnet by meaning it has either repulsion or attraction force. So this wire can be in the form of three shapes, and we need to discuss the shape of the field lines around each shape, the value of the magnetic flux density, the force affecting by it with another shape. So we can reshape this wire to make only a straight line wire straight wire or circular coil 
or a solenoid. By mean a wire carrying current or a circular coil which is carrying current or a solenoid carrying current. All of them are the same wire but we reshaped them. So we need first of all <coughs> to see the magnetic flux lines around. Starting with the straight line wire, straight line wires. So if we have a wire and this is the plane around, and there is a current passing this row called I from down to up. And we put some iron fillings in the paper. They found that the field lines around the straight line wires are concentric circles, concentric circles around the wire its center is the wire itself. As we get closer to the wire, they become crowded. As we get further from it, it becomes away <clears throat> or less crowded. Again, so they found that they are concentric circles. By mean all the circle has one center, so they are concentric. So concentric circles. And this center is the wire itself. As closer, or away, closer it will be crowded, and here less crowded. They <laughs> need to know the direction of the magnetic field and the value of the magnetic flux density for the concentric circles magnetic field around the straight line wire carrying a current. So for the direction, they used ampere right hand rule. which state that <coughs> your right hand, the sum is directed toward the current direction. So if the current is moving from down to up, so the sum directed toward is up. So the sum always directed toward is the current direction. The rotation of the fingers is the magnetic field lines direction. So again, the sum of your right hand directed toward is that current. So the rotation of your fingers is that? Magnetic. Great. So where exactly we can put the sum? Exactly on the wire. So here on the wire, 
it will be on the wire so at the right you have a magnetic field which enter the screen right yes while on the left we have magnetic field which getting out from the screen by me it would be like that here and here out so according to ampere right hand rule if we have a current from down to up on the right always we have into the page magnetic field and this cross is into the page magnetic field lines so this is a sample for into the page while on the left always it will be dots the dot here by mean out the page so here in and here out so cross by mean in dot by mean out so by using ampere right hand rule your stretched thumb is directed to where is the current so your rotational fingers are rotate with the magnetic field lines so for a current from down to up on the right it will be in on the left it will be out okay Great. can i use the left hand or on the right only right and the right hand rule okay okay <clears throat> this is for direction what about the value of p i think we said b equal phi over a but here we have concentric circles so it depends on what there it depends on the magnetic field lines caused by the magnet itself but here we don't have a magnet but we have electromagnet so what codes the magnetization for the wire of course the current as the current inside the wire increases the magnetization will increase as the current to stop no magnetization can happen so the magnetic flux density depends on the amount of current passing through the wire right yes great and if we said that <clears throat> we have a point away from the wire by five centimeter you will find that this point is lying on a circle right yes and as this point away from the wire is lying on a circle it means that this distance will be the same always at any point along the circle because the wire is considered as the center yeah so if we said that find the magnetic flux density at a point away from by a distance d we can say that it will not be d it will be the circumference because any point along this circumference having the same view yes or no yes same. yeah so two by d and d is a variable radius so two by d and d is the distance away from the wire which is a variable radius according to at which uh, circle exactly okay great for the current as we increasing the current what will happen for p to increase great by mean that it is direct proportional or inversely proportional direct great while for the circumference as we get away from the wire so the magnetic flux density will increases or decreases 
decrease. Great by mean that it is an inversely proportional. Yeah. The third property is the permittivity mu. What is the permittivity? The permittivity is the medium. It looks like the capacitor. If we have a medium, so this medium has the ability to conduct electricity, yes or no? Yes. So we call it permittivity and it is directly proportional to according to the medium. For the free space, it's four pi into 10 power negative seven. But I mean that if we have this current passing through the wire and the wire is put in the free space or in air, so it will be four pi into 10 power negative seven. So this is a constant value. Okay. So yes. the value for P according to these factors will be B equals mu, which is direct, I, which is direct two over two by D. In Tesla, of course, or Whipper per meter squared. So the first electromagnet, if we reshape the wire to make a straight line wire, so we find that the magnetic field lines is considered as a concentric circles around the straight line wire. Their centers in the wire itself, as we get closer, it become crowded. As we get away, it become less crowded. In order to know the direction of rotation, we're using a per right hand rule, which state that your sum directed toward is that current direction. The rotation of the fingers will be the rotation of the magnetic field lines. If the current is passing from down to up, so always on the right, it will be end to the page by mean cross. To the left, it will be dots by mean out the page and the value of the magnetic flux density b depending on the current i because electromagnetic depend on the amount of current directly proportional the perimeter or the circumference of the circle because at any point away from the wire it would be located on a, a, a concentric circle so it will be two by d and d at that variable radius Mu is the permeability of the medium, and in case of air or free space, it is four pi into ten power negative seven. So p will be equal to mu i over two pi d. And in some situation, we can say that p is equal to mu, which is four pi into ten power negative seven multiplied by i over two pi multiplied by D, so we can cancel two pi with four pi, and it will be two into 10 power negative seven I over D. This is correct, and this is correct. Okay. okay. The second one, which is the circular coil shape. So I have a question, please, before you start the new one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the first equation, we learned that uh, P equal to uh, flux over area. Why did you ignore the permittivity value? Yeah, because for a strong magnet or a permanent magnet, it will not be affected. While here, for the current, because the current may increase or decrease according to the resistance of the wire itself, so we can take it in consideration. Okay. The second one is a circular coil. So for a circular coil, we found that if we have this plane,
and here we have yes this is a current i in and here is i out what do you mean that it will be directed like that so they found that the circular coil acts as at this point and at this point it acts as a straight line wire so you can find that there is a small circles around each terminal of the two terminals of the circle which getting out or getting in from the paper while at the center here they found that the magnetic field lines are straight lines passing through the center of this coil again for a circular coil at the two terminal at which the current is in or out which getting out from the paper they treated them as two straight line wire by mean you will find that a small circles will be around because the current is passing in a straight line while for the whole circle or the arc of the circle the current rotates so according to ampere right hand rule now your sum of right hand will not be directed toward the current because the current rotates either clockwise or anti-clockwise so the sum will be directed toward the field lines direction so it is the reciprocal process for the straight line wire, the current is passing in a straight line, so it's the sum is directed toward the current, and the field rotate with your finger rotation. But here, for the whole arc of the circle, the rotation of your finger is with the current. By mean, if the current is clockwise or anti-clockwise, so you will find that the sum of your right hand is directed toward the field lines by mean that the field lines will be parallel straight line passing through the center of the coil so it will be like that so for the circular coil at terminals or full arc for the terminals we have circles as i is directed straight line direction while full arc it is a straight lines as i rotates and according to ampere right hand rule ampere right hand rule they found that for a coil at which the current is moving either clockwise or anti-clockwise how we can find the direction of the magnetic fields 
So here in A and B. Here is anti-clockwise. So anti wise. While here is clockwise. So let's use a bare right hand root for the rotational here. So for case A, the current was rotated anti clockwise. So your sum is directed out the page out the page great by mean that it will be but two by mean out the page while here for clockwise so it will be clockwise. So your sum is directed into the page. Into the page. And as this one is out the page, it means that this coil, this coil face is north. because it's getting out from the page. So this one is considered as north because at north, the field getting out. While here, for the clockwise direction of current, the field is directed into the page. And as it is into the page, so this face is considered as south. So for a circular coil using ampere right hand root, you will find that the direction of your fingers is the rotation of the current, either clockwise or anti-clockwise, while your stretched sum direction is directed toward the field lines, which are a straight line passing through the center of the circle. In case of clockwise, wise, it means that into the page and it will be south. So why is south? Why is south? While anti wise, anti wise, it will be north. So south wise, north anti wise. So this is the directions of the field lines in case of circular coil. What are the factors affecting on the magnetic flux density B for a circular coil? Sir, yes. I have a question. Sure. These two are the same, right? Sure. But here, we just put a plane in order to see the iron fillings direction. Okay. Yeah. So B for a circular coil. What are the factors affecting? Uh, the length of the wire? First of all. The yeah, current. the current. Yes, sure. The current, which is directly proportional, increasing, increasing, decreasing, decreasing. So direct. Second of all, the permeability, direct to Okay. And third of all, uh, if we need the magnetic flux density at the center, or 
the magnetic flux velocity away from a center. So this is a circle, right? Yes, it's a circle. And the current is passing through all the circuit, right? Yes. So it means that this circle is considered as a point, point charge. Point. Great. And at the point the charge, it means that at any point inside the circle, it will be affected at the diameter to R. Yes or no? What? Should be what, sir? Again, if we are talking about this distance, so this distance will act as R, right? Yes, it will act as R. And it will not be acted as R only. Why? Because in the opposite side, there is another R at which the same charge will be affected by. Okay. So we can say that at any point inside the circle, it will be affected by the diameter. Because at this point, the magnetic flux density is this whole lines which are getting out or in starting from the tangent to the coil itself till the center. Because as a current passing through it, it turned it into a point charge. So this is the diameter. Again, for the circular coil. Why we take the diameter? Because at any point inside, it will be treated at this point is located at the surface of the circular coil. So any point, any point will be affected by the radius. But as it has the same charge in the opposite, side of the circle, it will be affected by positive charges. So we consider the distance at the whole diameter. Okay. So according to these three factors, we can say that P for circular coil is equivalent to mu I over two R. And this is only for a circular coil. But if we reshape the straight line wire to make more than circular coil, by mean we have a circular coil, but have many turns. So it will be affected too by the number of turns because the number of turns in active as a multiples of the coil by mean. If each coil has its own magnetic field of turns, so if we duplicate it, so it will increase by mean. If we have here, they are connected in series, right? Yes. So each one has its magnetic field. So the second one has a magnetic field. The third one has a magnetic field. The fourth one has a magnetic. So we will add them. So the magnetic field, the strength will increase. Yes. So the number of turns for the magnetic, uh, sorry, for the circular coil is directly proportional with the magnetic field of turns. So we can say that here multiplied by N. 
and the n is the number of turn of the circular coil. Okay. So P for a circular coil is equal to mu n i over 2 r, and the r is the radius of the circular coil, and we acted it as a point to charge, so any point on or in will be acted as it is a point on the surface of the circle, affected by the whole diameter. Okay. All right. Okay. For note that. For n, add a number of turns. This number of turns can be uh, given by more than one way. By mean that he can give you the number of turns easily. We have a circular coil of 50, 500, 300, n. So n is equal to 300. But we have five cases in which you have to calculate the number of turns. First of all, if he give you a wire lens, I mean, we have a wire lens L and we reshaped it to make a circular coil. of radius r. So how we can find n? Um, let me think, sir. Yes. We have wire length L. Yeah. We have and the radius r. We reshaped it with a radius r loops. Yeah, the length divided by R. No. N will be equals to length, but divided with two pi R. We have a wire and this wire, we reshape it as a circle of radius R. So we need to know how many circles. So each circle will take how many centimeters for the length of the wire? It will take two pi r. The circumference, right? No, sir? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, so n in this case will equal to one, right? Yeah, but uh, in case he give you L equal 50 and the radius is equal to five, so it will be 50 over two pi into five and see how many thirds. The second case, in case he said loop or ring, by mean that we reshaped it to make a loop or a ring, it means that n will be equals to one. So if we reshape a straight line wire to make a loop or a ring, so n will be equals to one because we hold, we has only one loop or one ring. If we have angle theta faces an arc of a circular coil. How we can find n? We mean that he will give you this and say that we have only this arc. So this arc is considered how many rings or how many loops or how many turns. Again, we have an angle theta 
faces an arc. And we need to know this arc is represented how many arc, uh, how many loops? Okay. So it will be this angle. What? Yeah. Yeah, this one. Um, let's say phi divided by 360. Great. Yeah. Yeah, so it will be theta over 360. And this is the number. We need the number only. We didn't know the value. So it will be the number only theta over 360 because this arc represented the amount of angle over the whole circle, 360. In case he give us a whole circle, except this arc, and this one has an angle theta. So n will be equals to Yeah, 360 minus theta over three. Yeah, 360. Minus theta over 360, great. The last one, something we call it a uh, number of turns per unit lens, n over L which is equivalent to n small. So n small here is equal number of turns per unit lens. So turns per lens. So in a problem, if he give you number of turns per unit lens, you have to multiply it with the lens in order to find the number of turns in and put in the uh, uh, rule again. The five is by which we can find the number of turns. If we give you a wire lens and the radius of a loop, so we have to make that n equal L over two pi R. In case of loop or ring, we have n equal to one. In case of an angle C that faces an arc, it will be theta over 360. If we have a loop and we just take a part of it, and we need the rest of the loop. So it will be 360 minus theta over 360. While in case of number of turns per unit length, we have to multiply it by L in order to find the number of turns. Any doubt about the circular coil? Um, no, no doubt. Sir? No, sir. I said no, sir. No, no questions. Okay, right. Let's move to the third one. The third one will be the solenoid. The solenoid. Okay. The solenoid is more than one circular coil, but separated from each other. So we have Okay, something like that. And here we have I N and I getting out and the current will pass through then down 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 Great, and from behind, it will be up. So uh, first of all, we need to know the shape of field lines through the solenoid. According to Ampere right-hand rule, Ampere right 
and rule. The same as circular coil, your right hand. The rotation of the finger will be the rotation of the current and your directed thumb is directed to where is the field lines. So which current exactly in the front, not in the behind. So this errors, I mean, if the current is in, so from behind it will be up and front will be in, up, in, up, down, sorry, up, down, up, down. They found that <clears throat> when the current is rotated through the solenoid, the field lines will be straight line parallel to the axis of the solenoid. What is the axis of the solenoid? The axis of the solenoid is the straight line passing through the whole centers of the circular coil. So the straight line passing through the whole centers of the circular coil, we call it axis of the solenoid. So they found that all the magnetic field lines are straight line parallel to this axis. And according to Ampere right hand rule, they think that If the current is up, 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 or down, 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 down. Okay. Open your <clears throat> right hand like this and put your stretched finger on the solenoid. If the arrows of the current is with your stretched fingers, so your thumb is directed toward the north. Again, for ampere right hand root, put your open right hand your stretched finger will be directed toward the current. If the arrows of the current in the same direction of your fingers up, so your thumb directed toward the north. In case you put and you find that the arrows of the current is opposite to the fingers, so this one will be directed toward the south. So in this case, this is thumb. And this is fingers. Yes, this is some. This is fingers. Yeah. So your fingers stretch it upward, the current is upward. So this one will be toward is north. So here will be south and here will be north. So it directed toward is north. While here, stretch it fingers upward, the cannon downward. So this one will be south and this is north. Okay.
Nasır? Nasır? Yes, okay, sir. Okay. And now we consider this solenoid as an electromagnetic, but the field lines will be directed outside or inside. What? For which one? For this? There is a problem in sound. Okay, no. I will fix that one. Okay, no, no, no. Now I listen. Now I can hear you. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Now I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. What was your question? For the solenoid, the magnetic field lines will be outside or inside? Um, it will be inside. Great. So we treat it at, as a magnet, and the magnetic field is inside, which is directed from what to what? North to south. No, north to south. No, uh, south to north. Uh -huh. south. So here, the field lines will be directed from south to north. So the field lines will be directed like that. And here, yes, great. So again, for ampere right hand rule for the solenoid, we said that all the magnetic field lines will be directed parallel to the axis of the solenoid. Again, the axis of solenoid is a straight line at which all the centers of the circular coil passing through it. By applying ampere right hand rule, open your right hand your fingers always stretch it upward if the current direction is the same as your fingers so your thumb directed toward is north if it is opposite so it will be directed toward is south and for the solenoid the magnetic field lines is directed inside the solenoid from south to north great now what are the factors affecting on P as a magnetic flux density of solenoid? We have, first of all, of course, the current I, directly proportional. As the current increases, the magnetic field strength will increase too. Yes. The permeability mu as it increases, it will be increased too. Yeah. The lens of the solenoid. Now we are talking about the lens of the solenoid because we have more than one pair of circular coil. So we have the lens. If you need to know the magnetic flux density, so it would be the lens of the solenoid. As the solenoid lens increases, it means that the spaces between each one turn and another one will increase and the magnetic flux will decrease. So now we are talking about the lens of the solenoid. And of course, the number of turns, which make it increase. So according to these four factors, we can say that P is equal to mu I into N over L. Yes. So this is the factors affecting on the magnetic flux density on a solenoid. So again, B is directly proportional with mu, which is four pi into 10 power negative seven in case of air or free space, multiplied by the current passing through the solenoid, multiplied by the number of thirds of the solenoid, divided by the length of the solenoid, as the length of the solenoid increases for the same number of thirds, for the same number of thirds. But I mean that we have five thirds. Now we are increasing the length of the solenoid. It means that the separated distances between each turn and another will increase and this one will weak the uh, magnetic flux uh, density. <laughs> this is centers. <clears throat> you have a no, no. Okay. 
Note that for the selenoid, we have more than one important hack. First of all, if he said we have a coil, and this coil, we reshaped it into a solenoid. We have a coil reshaped into a solenoid. So, mu n i will be the same. Again, we have a coil and we have a solenoid or we have a coil, turn it into a solenoid. If we have a solenoid, turn it into a coil. So mu n i for coil is equal to mu n i for solenoid. No change. The change happened only for the length of the solenoid or the diameter. Okay, this is the first point. Second point, which is the most important. Number two, for a solenoid. If we have a solenoid and we cut part of it, we cut part of it. Then we connected the rest of the solenoid with one time, same current. I and the other time with same voltage V. Find the ratio between P1 over P2. As P1 is the P for the full solenoid. P2 is for the cutted one. Or the solenoid after being cut. <laughs> So again, we have a solenoid, which has a lens L. Uh, we cut one over three of its lens and connected the two over three with same current one time, then same voltage another time. We need to find P1 over P2. What will happen for the flux density? So this is the formula, right? Yeah, this is the formula for the solenoid. Okay, for B1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for B2, it will be.
This is for same current or same voltage? For same current. Great. So for same current, P1 over P2 will equals to 3 over 2. For same voltage. Okay, for same voltage. Here, I is equal to V over R. Oh, okay. And R is directly proportional to the length, right? R is equal to yes. resistivity L over A. Okay. So I got that P1 equals P2. Great. So for same voltage, because the resistance will cancel the effect of length. So P1 equals to P2. Great. So this is the most important hack in solenoid. In case we connected it with same current, so it will be reverse. If we cut it 1 over 3 and the rest, it will be 2 over 3. So it will be 3 over 2. While in same voltage, we will say that it has the same magnetic flux density. Okay, great. All right. Okay. 
So again, for a wire carrying a current, I turn it into magnet, as we said, let's summarize. First of all, if it is straight line wire or coil or solenoid, in case of straight line wire, so P will equals to mu I over two pi D. In case of coil, so P coil will equals to mu N I over 2R for solenoid, P will equals to mu N I over LS, okay. Yes, this is for the values. For the direction, again, we have three cases. The straight line wire, coil clockwise and coil anticlockwise, and solenoid. Okay. In case of straight line wire with a current from down to up. So we said that always, always, this one will be into the page, great. And here we have out the page. For clockwise, we have south. For anti-clockwise, we have north. So this one will be out the page and this is into the page. While for a current in a solenoid downward. So this one will be south and this one will be north and it will be directed from south to north. While in case if the current is upward, so it is north and this one will be south. Great. What will happen if we have two magnetic fields? And we need to find the resultant B. So again, this is the value, this is the direction, they were all very, very important. Why? Because the resultant B, resultant B has three cases. Either the two P's are in same direction or the two P's are in opposite direction or the two P's are perpendicular. In case we have two B is in same direction, so we will make the submission between them. So RP will equals to P1 plus P2. While in case they are opposite to each other, so we will make the subtraction and on RP will equals to B1 or P2 minus B one or P2 according to the value. While if they are perpendicular, so we will take hypotenuse of Pythagoras. So resultant P will equals to the root square of B1 squared plus P2 squared. Again, we have here, Resultant P by need, we have two wires carrying current or wire and circular coil or solenoid and 
wire and we need to find the resultant p or the resultant magnetic flux density affected in case of two p's are nearer to each other in case they are in same direction so we will make the submission opposite directions we will make the subtraction if they are perpendicular so according to pythagoras we will take the hypotenuse which equal to the root square of p1 squared plus p2 squared let's see different cases for this one First of all, if we have two straight line wires <laughs> carrying current in same or in opposite directions. Okay, so here we have two wires and we have a current I1 similar to the current I2 in same directions. And here we have I1 opposite to the direction of I2. And we need to see the resultant between and outside the two wires. So here we need to know at the point A, point P, point C, here at point A, point P, point C, the resultant magnetic flux density. Okay, how we can find? First of all, we have to know the directions. So for the first wire, I2, according to right hand rule sub is directed upward so here is into the page yes and here out the page yeah and here into the page right so here is out Okay, there also is in, okay, and for this wire, here is out, and here is out, and here is in, great. So, no need to draw any, any, any errors. We have only, as you draw here, we have in N, and here we have, yes, here it's out, and here we have in, great. Okay. Here, at A, we have two opposite directions, so, B resultant will be equals to B1 minus P2. While here, it will be one plus P2. And here we have P1 also plus P2. So the probability of finding a neutral point is at C, A, or P. Mm. No, sir? At A. Right. So the neutral point is at A. Why? Because the neutral point always, always, in the region at which there is a negative region or negative sign. So here we can say that the P is equal to B if they have the same current and the point is at the center or at the mid distance between the two wires. So for P1 here, it will be equals to mu I1 over two pi D 
And here's the same, B2 will equals to mu I2 over two by D. If we have the same current, I1 is equal to I2. We can say that here is zero. Yes, okay. Okay, for the two opposite directions. So make it by yourself. Okay, according to ampere right hand rule. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Either A or C, by the way. No, oh, yes, yes, A or C, yeah. Great. Uh, the trick here, <clears throat> if he said, yes, we have, this is the direction of a current, while here, direction of electrons and find B at point A. He give us the two direction. The first one is the direction of the current, while the second one is the direction of the electron motion. Or he give us a current then sorry yeah a circle and this is the center of circle so here it is a radius r and here we have a current i and he need the value of i1 find i1 Here the current is F, and here is, as you can see, clockwise. Okay, here we have uh, two wires, straight line wires. The first one is the current direction, while the second one is the electron direction. So the electron direction is opposed to the current direction. So we can cancel this one and say that both of them are moving in the same direction of current, right? Yes. So here is I1, but here is I2. And this case, P between two similar current is plus or minus? Minus. Yeah, so RP at A is equal to P1 minus P2. 
Yes, so A is the neutral point. Yeah. So A may be a neutral point in case they have the same magnetic flux density. But here. <laughs> If we have a wire and a circular coil, and the wire is a tangent to the circular coil, and he need to find I1 in terms of I2. So first of all, B1 is equal to B2, he said that. Why? Because this one is a neutral point. So he asked it, if C is neutral point, find I1 in terms of I2. So if he said that this is neutral point, but I mean that the P caused by the straight line Y is equal to the P caused by the circular coil. So for P1, it is mu I1 over 2 pi R, while B2 is equal to mu I2 over 2 R. We will cancel the mu with mu, 2r with 2r. So i1 over pi will equal to i2. So i1 will equal to i2 into pi. So here the first trick and here the second trick. The first trick is if he give us, I think I had a lot of tricks. Yes. The first trick, if he has a uh, straight line wire carrying a current and in the other one uh, he gave us the direction of the electrons instead of the current and the second one if we have a straight line wire and a circular coil which is tangent to this and he need to find the current any doubt about this one um no Okay. The third trick. If we have a two wires carrying current in opposite directions, so here I1, and here I2, and uh, there is a neutral point here. So he said that the neutral point is at point C. But you mean that at C, B total is equal to zero or P1 is equal to B2. If we reverse it, I2. So, B total will equals to what at C. Again, he's saying that two straight line carrying current in opposite direction to each other. If the point C is outside, the second wire is a neutral point, but I mean at which P total is equal to zero. If we reverse it, I2 to be in same direction with I1. So B total at C will equals to uh, 
What? Thinking about it. Okay. Take your time. Great. It will be double the flux. Great. Two P. Okay. The last hack or the last trick here. What uh, happened in case he give us F solenoid toes? F solenoid. Turns are tangent or touch each other. Uh, so the lens of solenoid will be equal to what? And B for solenoid will equal to what? Okay. Solenoid turns yes. are tangent, touch each other. Mm -hmm. Tangent or touch each other. The, the turns of the solenoid. So I mean, there is no spaces. Uh, no spaces. That's we need to know the L of selenoid and B for selenoid. Am I right, sir? Uh, okay, but why you talk the the diameter? We need only the lens. Uh, sorry, why you talk the perimeter? We need only the lens.
We don't the length of the wire. Sir, what's the question exactly? Uh, what exactly they want? The length of the solenoid. I mean that if you put a ruler and you just need to measure the length of the solenoid, not the length of the wire from which we made the solenoid. Okay, so first you have to measure the radius. What? We need first to measure the radius, one circle, right? Yeah, it will be diameter. Or thickness. Not the diameter of the, the circle. If we have this term. Okay, and the other one is tangent to it like that. So we need the thickness of the wire. This thickness of wire, we can say that it is the diameter of the wire, right? Because if we have this wire, So this one will be the radius and the thickness of it is the diameter. So the length of this solenoid will be the number of turns multiplied by the diameter of the wire or the thickness of the wire, right? Sir, uh, can you please repeat? What? Okay, I think my mic is not working. Sir. So, the length of the solenoid will be diameter or thickness of the wire, D wire, multiplied by N. And D wire here, either. Wire diameter. or wire sickness. Sir, can you hear me? You got it? Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Yes, I didn't understand actually. How did you calculate the length? Okay. Again, we have a wire. This wire has a sickness, right? And this wire, we rolled it. To make this, this shape. We need to find the lens of this shape. How you can find the lens of this shape? We have three turns of the same wire, so we have N multiplied by this small distance will be repeated three times. This small distance is what? The distance of each wire. This distance, either the thickness of the wire or The whole diameter of the wire, if the, the wire is a circular, so it is the whole diameter. So if you need to find the lens of the solenoid, the solenoid is made up of many turns of the same wire, which have the same thickness. So we have to find the thickness of the wire multiplied by the number of turns. This thickness is the diameter of the wire You got it? Uh, no, actually. Uh, do you have, uh, do you know the cable of the laptop? 
Yes, I have it here. Okay, can you use the cable to uh, wand it on a mug or anything? Or just uh, look at the, the wire of the cable. You will find that this cable has a thickness, right? Yes. This thickness is equal to what? Uh, nearly, it's maybe one centimeter. What? One, one centimeter. Okay. Nearly. This is the shape master. Okay. This yeah. is the shape, right? Yes. If we need no. a cross section of the thorns, so it will be this, they are tangent to each other, and we need to know the lens. So the lens is equal to what? How many wires we have? Or by other mean, how many turns of the same wire? We have three. Multiplied yes. by the distance of each wire. The distance of each wire is the thickness of the wire or the diameter of the wire. Right? Uh, okay, I understand, yes. Yeah, so the length of the solenoid in this case it is equal to the number of turns multiplied by the diameter of wire of thickness of wire. And of course, B will equals to mu I N over diameter wire multiplied by N. So N will be canceled with N and B will equals to mu I over thickness of the wire or diameter of the wire. Okay, it's clear. So any problem about this point? No, no problem. I think we reach it to the end of the session. We talk all the hacks about the magnetic fields. Uh, in the next session, inshallah, we will talk the force and torque. And in the last session for this chapter, we will take uh, the application on it. Okay. Sir. Okay. See you, inshallah, in the next session. Inshallah. See you, sir, next Wednesday. Peace.